Hey everyone, quick question. What is the main thing that these three clips have in common? Look closely. I'll give you a little time to think about it. Got any ideas? Okay, time's up. If you looked at the title for this video, you might say that they have something to do with screen transitions, and you'd be absolutely right. They're an underrated aspect of video games and are important when making a game look polished and professional. So today, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to teach you how to simply make screen transitions in Godot 4. Here is our current game. As you can see, we have a player walking around, but when I switch to go to the next level, it's extremely choppy. This is because there's no transitions. When you don't have transitions in your game, your game ends up looking sloppy, unfinished, and choppy. And that's not what we want. So then, the question is, how do we fix this? Well, we're going to have to start by going into the Godot editor. I've started by creating the player, the tile map, an exit, and then the background. In addition, I have also created two levels that the player can travel between. How traveling between levels currently works is that when the player hits the Area 2D that is attached to the exit, the signal will be sent to our demo level script. This works, and it will get the job done early in development, but we want to add transitions, so let's go ahead and do that. Our next step is going to be to add our transition handler as an autoload, and what that'll do is allow us to access the script from anywhere within our code. Now all we have to do is actually write the script for our autoload. So the first thing we're going to do is just set up our screen dimensions as a dictionary, with the width and height coming from the project settings get setting method and leaving the center empty for now. So then, whenever we start up our application, we get the center of our screen based off the width and the height. Now we're going to go and set up our fade out method. It takes the current scene, the scene you're traveling to, the duration of the transition, and the transition color as arguments. Then, inside our function, we set up a new canvas layer, color rec, tween, and make sure that it's at the root of our project. After that, we add our color rec to our canvas layer and then start the tween animation to make the color rec visible. Once the color rec is visible, we remove the previous scene from the project view. Then, we're going to instantiate our destination scene and set up another tween which will fade out our color rec. Something that I haven't really talked about yet on this channel are the ease type and transition type enums available in the tweens. So really all these do is affect how quickly your tween will run, and you can make it slow on one end, fast on another, there's a lot you can do with it. But anyways, once all that's done, all we have to do is set our current scene to the destination scene, and then get rid of our canvas layer. Now that we have our transitions all set up, all we have to do now is go into our level scripts, and then change our signal so that it points to our new transition handler and give it the specified arguments. So for our first level, we're going to make it point to the second level, and then for the second level, we'll go vice versa, or the next level. It's easily expandable, and it'll work in any scene because it is an auto-load, so that's great for us. So now when we run our game, our transitions should work appropriately. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I've got for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is a new style of content for me. I feel like I'm starting to learn how to edit somewhat. This is the first video that I've really even used a script uh, or even just not done it all in one take. So thank you all for bearing with me. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments or just message me what you want to see me cover next. And uh, I hope you all have a good day. Bye-bye.